Okay, here we have a problem that could have been posed in Algebra 2 if your Algebra 2 teacher was actually pretty mad at you. Uh, square root of x minus square root of x plus 8 is equal to 2, solve for x. Uh, this one involves the sum or the difference of two square roots, and so to solve this we actually have to square twice to, to solve for x. So let me start with the original problem, square root of x minus square root of x plus 8 equals 2. Now if I square that, I get the square of the first minus 2 times the first times the second plus the square of the second is equal to the square of the right hand side. So that's just squaring both sides. Now next I'm going to put everything that has a square root on one side, everything that doesn't have a square root on the other side. So that's going to be 2x uh, plus 4 is equal to 2 times square root of x times square root of x plus 8. And for this one I can divide by 2 to make my life a little bit easier. Now I square both sides again. x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals x times x plus 8. And so solving for x we get uh, x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to x squared plus 8x. And so we get 4x is equal to 4, which makes x equal to 1. And so it looks like x equals 1 is a solution. But clearly, if I plug in 1 back in, I get square root of 1 minus square root of 9. And square root of 1 minus square root of 9 is not equal to 2. It's equal to negative 2. So I have no solutions. So this is extraneous. Okay, now what happened? The problem is that when I square both sides, that is a not an if and only if statement. So for example, negative 5 doesn't equal 5, but if I were to square both sides, 25 is equal to 25. So I can't go, I, I can't reverse the steps to go from here to here, but I could start with two things that are not equal, square both sides, and end up with things that are equal. So that's the essence of the problem here. So here, that is a one-way implication. Uh, this one is an if and only if. Dividing by 2 on both sides, that's fine. But then I had to square both sides a second time. And so the net effect is that the top line implies the bottom line, but I can't start at the bottom line to end up with the top line. So we have shown that if there is a solution, it's x equals 1. That's the only possible solution. But I don't know that x equals 1 is a solution until I ch check my work until I plug into the original equation and see if it actually works. Okay, so the algebra looks like that x equals 1 is an answer, but it turns out that there's an extraneous solution because of there's not one but two cases where I only have one-way implications as opposed to by implications.